Peace and greetings. Peace and greetings. Okay, I pray that you can hear me and see me clearly. God is changing us. And I want to talk to you about a subject that I've been waiting to post about for like ever. <laughs> I've been waiting to talk about it. I've been waiting to post about it. And the time has come, right? So if you've been following my journey, you know that I have been living abroad, traveling a lot since uh, 2020. So that's four years this year. My four-year anniversary. And I think of it like bachelor's level. Like there's, you know, pre-K, there is a PhD level, you know, obviously a collegiate level. There's middle school, elementary school. I'm, I'm a bachelor's level in motherland now, right? So um, it's been different. And today we're just talking about dating East African men versus dating West African men. And what is that dynamic like? Um what can you expect if you are moving or recently have moved to the East Coast of the continent or the West Coast of the continent? Um, first of all, I'd like to say that there is certainly a lot. There is certainly a lot of fanfare around West African wedding. There's a lot of fanfare around having a Nigerian wedding, um, having a certain kind of vibe and party and et cetera. And I will tell you that there are a lot more risks involved. Like the wedding is almost like compensation for some of the things that you may have to deal with after being married to someone from Nigeria. So I, I just have to acknowledge that because I know that there's just a lot of, you know, internet circulation and videos of these beautiful and extravagant weddings, but not really understanding the culture of what some of these women have to deal with at the cost of that wedding. So anyways, back to the subject. Back to the subject. We'll save the Nigerian conversation and wedding conversation for another video. All right, so I have my notes. I'm going to be looking down and um, explaining things to you. So I have lived in Gambia, Senegal, West Coast. I have um, visited Ghana and Nigeria. And then I have lived in Tanzania, Kenya, East Coast, and then visited Rwanda, um, et cetera. So I have dated men from these different countries and and or been on dates with men from these countries and I feel like I have a pretty solid understanding now of like what what the differences are so the first thing I will say is the personality energy of East Africa and West Africa is completely different it's like night and day so when it comes to men from West Africa they're very expressive very open, they can be very social, um, very down to earth, easy to get to know, like you, you might have easier access in like conversation, a lot more exposure. So there's a lot more of the Western characteristic that we would even associate to the US or to UK. There's a lot more Western characteristics with those types of men. I have found that men from Senegal and Gambia have a particular type of romantic culture that is, is very prominent. And a lot of women have, you know, spoken on the subject of dating Gambian men or dating Senegalese men and, and you know, having them request money or different things from them or marriage scams. And I will say that in terms of poverty, when people are poor, you find <laughs> scamming is abundant. When people are poor and destitute and you take yourself 
into a, a relationship with a broke ass man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like some of the things that I've seen, it's honestly laughable because you wouldn't date a broke man in the state. You you know, if he's like sleeping on his home for his couch, you're not gonna be like, oh, that's the one for me, you know? But I find that a lot of times women come over to the continent and are a little bit more unrealistic about their choices for partnership than they would be at home. It's like you had standards there and you didn't bring any of them here. So when it comes to that romance scamming and money laundering or whatever, you can find that anywhere on the continent and really anywhere in the world because people who are broke do broke stuff. If there's poverty involved, then you can expect some poverty-based action. Um, you know, not saying that that you shouldn't choose based off of character and based off of integrity and these other things, but really understanding who and what you are as a woman who has left a Western lifestyle, who may be degreed and educated um, and have certain desires in her heart, you know, living at a certain level economically. Um, finding companionship means finding connection with people who relate and understand you and aren't looking for a meal ticket, aren't looking for a way out, aren't looking for child, this Nat is trying to get my fruit juice. Yeah, aren't looking for a quick come up. So a lot of um a lot of situations that women have experienced can be avoided in just assessing, you know, economic intentions. But anyhow, so the personality for West Africa, like I said, a lot more Western in that in that sense that we're familiar with. East Africa is like, again, like night and day. East African men are definitely more laid back, not as social and outgoing and explosive and personable. They're very uh, kind hearted. They're gentle. They're, you know, uh, very gentle. They're not, they're not in, in hot pursuit, as I would call it, meaning like, when I've been pursued by a West African man, it was clear, like, this man really, is really attracted to me. He's hitting me up. He's coming by. He's coming through. Like, West African man who was interested in me, I, I've been here from him for, like, three weeks. But he's interested, but it's way too passive for me. <laughs> um, and that's just me, you know. Like, other people have had more more energy put behind their their East African pursuit, but it's definitely not aggressive. It's not an aggressive pursuit. It's not a in your face pursuit. And specifically here in Tanzania, I haven't like dated, you know, one particular person. I've been on dates here in Tanzania prior to getting married. And I'm so I'm always so kind of shocked and appalled by the culture here which is very like yeah I'm married and yeah this is my girlfriend you know when I first got here to Tanzania I met up with a sister from the U.S. and our first conversation in the car was like don't date anyone here don't take anyone seriously they're all married they're all married and theoretically I can understand the marriage concept here a little bit better than other places because it makes sense to me. So the way I rationalize it is when parents invest in their son and, you know, put him through school, put him through secondary school, make sure he has the best of everything um, and really groom him in terms of becoming a husband or, you know, taking on the responsibilities and having children and et cetera, like they want to marry their son off early so that they can start giving them their land, their inheritance, so that they can start building their life. And so imagine that son is like 26 
he's already married. So by the time you meet him at third, when he's 36, he's been married 10 years. He got three kids. You know, so the there's not, I haven't met a lot of guys in their late 30s who are unmarried. I've met guys in their late 30s who are divorced. Um, so they're, you know, they're divorcing if they say that for guys, but not just like completely unmarried, never been married and they're Tanzanian, you know, um, it's, it's a part of the culture here for people to have boyfriends and girlfriends, even when they're married, like that's the norm. That's not normal where I'm from. <laughs> that ain't it. <laughs> Um, my neighbor came over and was talking about how, like, she, you know, met someone and it was like, oh, yeah, here's my boyfriend who is also somebody's husband. Like, this somebody's husband is your boyfriend? Like, that's not making any sense. <laughs> so it's different. Um, and it's just part of the Tanzanian culture. It's a little suspected. Um, and you wouldn't know that if you set foot over here culturally, you wouldn't know any of that. So you coming over here bright eyed and bushy tailed, you about to get messed up, sis. Like there has to be some level of accountability in terms of learning from other people's mistakes. That's how I feel. Like my mom used to always hammer that into my head. Like there's no need for you to make the same mistakes that I already made or a hundred women already made these mistakes. You know, we have to start learning from each other. We have to put ourselves in better positions romantically so that we don't get set up for the okie doke and we don't get messed up um, just because we don't know the, the cultural uh, dating norms. Another thing is Kenyan men. I have dated um, or went on dates with Kenyans. I mean, Kenyans are Western in my eyes. I'm like, oh, y'all from the States. Y'all yeah, from America. You know, they have a very, a very relaxed <laughs> swag. Like, you know, they can pursue, they can take you out on dates. You know, they're, they understand that they have to spend the money, you know, and, and that's a, that's another little thing. I'm going to make a note of that in terms of spending. But yeah, King and Man, they understand the assignment. And it's cool. But, you know, it's just, it's it's not the type of cultural interaction that I appreciated so much. Because for me, um, and this is important for you to know too, for me, I knew like why I was dating. I wasn't just dating just to be dating. I'm dating for purpose, like relationship. And I don't want to just go out and turn up and hang out. And opinions be going out, turning up. <laughs> and hanging out like it is it is it's part of the culture and you know there are Kenyans again there's everyone on the opposite side of the scale who doesn't do that there's some some who I'm sure are relaxed I was in Nairobi going on dates and so it was like oh okay yeah this is lit um but you know the culture that I that I uh observe is a very western culture in terms of the men and them knowing how to date or um you know even like being avoidant like if you know texting you all the time like that's not really as african you know that's not that african you know call you pull up with me but king and men they are cool with texting you so um another thing i want to say is i've found that I observe a lot of my sisters treating their relationships or treating dating in Africa the way they would treat it in the States, um, but just not as much precaution. And I want to tell you, like, cultural divides are real. You cannot date Tyrone the way you would date to leave Muhammad. You just can't. To leave Muhammad is not used to all that shit that she's bringing with you, all the baggage and the games that we've learned to play in the West. Lee Muhammad, he didn't learn that. You know, um, he, he just didn't learn it. And so you need to figure out how to, how 
try to open your mind so that you're learning the culture while you're dating someone like and and I I want to say this in a way that really makes sense like I've observed women who are footing the bill for men um in ways romantically like just romantically that don't align with his cultural expectations of being with a woman romantically like he may have grown up being raised by people who taught him that you're the man you have to provide you're the man you have to provide and then here your black ass come <laughs> It's joking. But here you come and you like out, you know, I'm paying the bills. Like, let's go, let's go here. I'm paying for that. Let's go there. I'm paying for that. And I know part of it is just the excitement and it's like, well, I have it, so let's do it. But also like there's the integrity of allowing him to do what corresponds with his culture. What 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 did that actually look like? You know, um to think that there are women in in all parts of Africa who have never worked and never lifted a finger and never paid not now nary a bill. They toes ain't done, their hands ain't done, you know, their feet ain't done, their hair ain't done. <laughs> you know, like they not fly. But the black women in the diaspora have a brand new 20 piece set lace front wig, hair done, nail sun, all the time, baby, lashes, you know, and et cetera, and et cetera. And meanwhile, you paying everything, you carrying more of a load than you need to, and you look pristine. It's just, it's too much responsibility. That always was a very big, like, what for me? Because, like, I would see these women being dogged out on reality TV shows and like y'all got boobs and they up to the sky and bellies flat, Colombian booties, lashes and nails and everything else. And your feet is always on fleet. But you ain't got no husband. You single, somebody cheating on you. Somebody had a baby by, on you by somebody else. Like it's just, it's not giving. Meanwhile, you got this African woman walking around with slave braids. She just took off her wig cap or whatever. She walked around her house dressed. Her feet looked like somebody stomped on them. And her bills is paid. <laughs> okay. She lives in a mansion in Nigeria. You feel me? <laughs> like it just it just and it just I don't know. It's just not it's not the math is not math. You see. So the cultural differences is one thing that I really want you to understand. It's very relevant, whether you're dating an East African man or West African man, you got to understand these cultural differences. Um, with Senegalese culture, like you gotta ask, okay, well, what is it like to date here? With Gambian culture, you gotta even peep the scene before you start dating. Like Gambians have a reputation, the, the country itself has a reputation of romantic scamming in a sense, but it's not really romantic scamming. What I observe is a whole bunch of old, white women or all white men with young Gambians. And that is that is it. It's not a lot of romantic scamming because with Gambian culture, and this is why it's important to understand the culture, with Gambian culture, it is a it's like a cow. It's like a prize to have a wife, you know, to have a husband. Like this concept of family for Gambians is probably more valuable than than gold, silver. So the concept of like this is my wife and like the pride that they really take in having a wife and oh that's the wife and oh you know look at the wife like who my wife be like there's a lot of pride and responsibility and um just different showering of love around being married you know there's jokes inside jokes that they have on bachelors you know if a, one friend is married the other friend is not they be like, oh, look at you, you a bachelor, you single, bro. Like, it's actually the opposite way in the States where it's like, oh, bro, she trying to tie you down. Like, you really ready to leave the single life, you know? So there's a culture and it's important to know the culture of the person that you're interested in and understand what that culture is outside of you and outside of your situation, even before you start dating someone. Um, yeah, so... 
Another point is, yeah, so I kind of tapped on it, but don't do anything with these East or West African men that you wouldn't do with somebody where you came from. Like, if you wouldn't be out sleeping with somebody unprotected where you came from, don't come all the way to a third world country and start sleeping with people unprotected. Like, why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? I, I, I don't understand why we're doing that. Um, it's a dangerous game to play. I done met many, uh, I've met many women who came here, beautiful, young, independent women, and then ran out of here, somebody's Tanzanian baby mama. Okay, like, the struggle be very real. Um, it's always, again, like baffling to me because I know that those standards were in place when you were living wherever you, you came from, if it was the States or Canada or, or UK or Germany, like you had those standards there. Don't lose your standards when you come out of town. Adjust your standards to your environment, but don't lose standards. You know, like even for uh, those of you who are entering into marriages, like really be aware of how you are investing your money in acquisition. You know, so like land purchases, house purchases, don't be putting that stuff in that man's thing. Don't do that. You need to find a neutral third party way to deal with it. Maybe you hire an attorney and put in an attorney's name for in a law firm thing and it was legally, but don't do do not set yourself up for failure. All right. And just to put it out there, if you know that your picker, your your people picker, your person picker was jacked up when you were at home, you know that you was picking people and they was not good people. You had a problem picking good people. You didn't find no good people to pick. You don't think your pick are going to be, what, new and updated now that you came somewhere else with a foreign culture? This is not your house, <laughs> okay? This is a foreign land. You don't know these people. So be smart. Be smart. You can't come over here and, and then blame them because you didn't use your intuition. You didn't use your wits. You know, again, like, we're, I'm just comparing East African men to West African men, and it's so different just in the couple of countries that I'm referring to. It's so different. So I, there's other countries that I haven't even visited where I'm sure the culture is, again, completely different. So it's really important to understand these isms and these little small things with the culture before you jump into bed with somebody and start dating. Like, even the concept of casual sex is, it's not like that here, okay? Like, you might have been able to do Tinder and stuff like that over there, but you can't do Tinder and stuff over here. You can't be casual sexing your way through it because it's going to reduce the amount of respect that the man has for you or the way that he's viewing you. Like, you, have to, you, you can't let your body and your libido guide you forever in terms of marriage, you know, and procreating. Because ultimately, when you do have a baby by somebody, that's your baby. That's your responsibility. You know, you don't have any kind of contract here. And, you know, being a woman here in, in Africa isn't easy in and of itself. There's so many things that that we have to deal with um, just being a single woman in Africa, but then to add on now being a baby mother, um, being a, a single mom or, um, being with someone in a relationship who may be in other relationships, like there's just levels of respect and integrity that you want to uphold while you're here. Um, especially if you plan on living in, in that country forever. So, yeah. All right. So I already talked about the personalities of East African men and West African men. Um, another thing I will say is with West African men, what I've, what I've noticed, okay, so it's different 
it's different from Gambia and Senegal mm -hmm. to like Ghana, Nigeria. But one thing that I noticed that's really different is if you're if you're with a Gambian or Senegalese person, mm -hmm. it's really important for you to meet the family and meet the friends and meet those people early, like especially to a Gambian. Gambians, like I said, they're kind of obsessed. Senegalese are kind of obsessed with family. So the sooner you can come around friends and come around family and meet these people, the better. That's part of that's part of the culture. Um, with Ghanaian and Nigerian, I didn't really peek that so much as part of the culture. Um, they kind of move more independent. And when I say more independent, like in Gambia, you can find, um, you know, a person who is working and doing this and doing that, still living in their family compound. So still living in the house of their grandfather, like not their house, but the houses. Um, on the compound wow in ghana like people would leave their village and do like we do in the states like go start go have your own house you know away from your mom and dad like away from your grandparents like just not living all together there was a lot of independence in ghana and even in nigeria a lot of a lot of people living in nigeria on their own um struggling through it on their own getting by on their own or doing well on their own so um, there's a lot of that here in Tanzania and even in Kenya I didn't really get into the meet the family kind of stuff and you know again even in understanding the cultural the cultural language and the cultural uh, spectrum Tanzanians are very passive people overall like the, like I said the energy is very peaceful it's like a centered we don't want no disruption we don't want to turn up we don't want no smoke so there's not a whole lot of like yeah come and meet my family because it's just it's not it's not part of the culture it's not like they're bold and taking those type of steps so if you do find yourself interested in, in an east african i would say it is something that you would have to request like because you, you might not get to meet them otherwise. So, um, yeah. Another thing is the whole risk it all type of swag. So I have a profile of man that I call the man willing to risk it all. And they have them. East Africa has them. West Africa has them. Men who say, I love you very early, who are willing to abandon their jobs or move out of their house and move in with you. Um, usually that risk it all energy is is poverty energy, poor energy. These men, they don't have anything to risk, really. And you find them everywhere. Like I think it's a little harder to find that same type of energy in Nigeria because Nigeria is so fast paced and people are so direct like you see people they see you <laughs> so you know with with that I, I I haven't seen as much of that um what I've seen in Nigeria with Nigerian relationships it's just a you know a lot of cheating um a lot of you know other kids and other families with other women that's the reputation and that's that's what I've observed but I haven't really seen like Oh, he tried to move in with me after the first two months. Um, I haven't, or I, he, you know, he's he he's trying to. It's just like the risk at all stuff. I haven't seen. I've seen that a lot in Gambia, and I've seen it a little bit here in Tanzania, but not at the rate I've seen it in Gambia. Again, no shade to Gambia. No shade to Senegal, no shade to any country at all. Married for a Gambian and Senegalian. So definitely not throwing a shade. Just wanting to speak the truth about what I've observed from East Africa to West Africa. So you have it in, in both the risk it all man, but poverty, giving broke. Um and the difference is like even broke guys in the U.S. can be like that, like willing to risk it all. Like I want to 
they want to move in or they live in your house after a short amount of time. But there's still some kind of like space, like, you know, like he's not like love bombing you and et cetera, et cetera, like someone here may do. So it's really important to just observe those things and really see see through the nonsense and the BS. Um and really understand what's going on. Like, you know, you're not in you're not in Kansas with no more, Dorothy. You're not in Kansas. It's a lot to learn. Like it with the picture. Uh if you like men who are relaxed and more passive and you know, not woo ha, got you all in shape. Like if you like that passive energy, then East Africa might be a good vibe for you. But if you like them to be more social and front and center, you know, and um, more aware of those cultural isms, then West Africa is probably a good fit. Um, that's actually the And with the culture isms, I hope I'm making myself clear. <laughs> because what I mean when I say that, like, there are inside jokes that we have that you can never, ever, ever have with someone who was born and raised on the continent. Like, jokes, things that we know about eating people's potato salad, okay? You know what to say when I say God is good, okay? And, like, you know, even just understanding the concepts of when the female is in a, in your man's face, like he needs to know, stop smiling and kicking in with her. You need to give her a cold shoulder, right? Those are things that we know culturally. And you really, you will, if you're in a relationship, you will really have to break down some of those things, like really jump into his world, have him jump into your world, so you both can understand one another. That's the beauty of it, like exploring the culture. Um, having said that, you want that to be as easy as possible. And if you know certain things just don't work for you, be willing to say, yeah, no, this ain't the one. Because it's a lot of fish, <laughs> a lot of fish. Don't be afraid to throw that one back in the ocean, okay? That's a lot more where that came from. So I hope that, that that covers, you know, a little foundation of East Africa versus West Africa, men and dating. Um, and then things you need to know about dating in Africa anyway. But if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. So just drop them in the comments and um, I'll be happy to answer them, all right?